call for order the meeting for Tuesday, November 1st, 2022 at 6.30. Please silence your cell phones. And if anyone wants to speak, make sure I have the um, little form. Okay. Roll call. Moultrie? Here. Williams? Here. Richardson? Here. Henry? Ma'am. Watts? Here. We're going to stand for the invocation by Mrs. Williams and the Pledge of Allegiance. Father, we come before you tonight with bowed head and humble hearts. First, to tell you, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done just for us, Lord God. And we thank you for how you blessed the city of Chattahoochee and kept it from all hurt, harm, and danger. We thank you, Lord, for being able to gather here tonight, and we invite you in the midst of us. Asking you, Lord God, to crown our heads with wisdom and knowledge that we may be able to come up with ideas to go back out and serve the city in a mighty way that you will be pleased. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amendments and approval of agenda? Madam Mayor, we do have some amendments tonight. Uh, under awards presentations, we had Florida State University students, they canceled out. Okay. And we scheduled, so that will be removed and then um, Janice Stout from the Care Works had asked to be on the agenda. We did. She also canceled. And then to place those, I would like to add um, that a request for Chinese Elementary School. Just put them under presentation so they might need longer than three minutes. Okay. And then also Stan James from Red Department, I'd like to put them under there. Give y'all a chance to hear some of the things that we've started and ask them any questions you may like. Okay. So we can do those as item A and B with the uh, Gentlemen, in school first. Sorry. Do we need to make a motion? No. Okay. I need a motion and a second to make those changes to the uh, appearance. I offer a motion that we accept the new appearance for one of the minutes here for November the 1st, 2022, of the Chattoja Elementary School presentation and Stan James presentation. Second. Ask that properly. Motion and second. Proper vote, please. Moultrie? Yes. Williams? Yes. Richardson? Yes. Cameron? Yes, ma'am. Yes. All right. We'll let Chattahoochee Elementary come up and speak. We got some royalty in the house. Don't be nervous. We're good. We're good. Good evening, Commissioner. Good evening. Good evening. I am Mr. Chattel, Elementary School. And I am Van Pugh, Mr. Chattel, Elementary School. We thank you for the digital science technology is so important, especially for sharing information. We plan to use your science to, pu to publicize community events, help to deliver information in case of emergency, and recognize our Baby Jacket family and community partners. We appreciate your consideration and support. Please don't hesitate to stop by to visit anytime. We want to get a picture with y'all. Y'all, come on up here. Y'all all like children better than us. Come on, y'all. Come on, baby. Just put it on the web, baby. No, not with me. Can I not start with you? Look, 
exercise and environmental leisure, relaxation, and fun. Chattahoochee Recreation Missions is to help kids and adults to see in life through sports, community involvement. Our mission is to get residents in our community out doing something. That's my motto, is do something. I hear a lot of people say, we're not doing that with the kids, so my thing back to them, I want you to do something to help us out with the kids. That's my motto, do something. I'll be having, I'm going to, I make t-shirts, I have t-shirts, hopefully you'll see it all over town, do something. Mm -hmm. Get these parents and get the community members out helping with the kids and everything. Uh, some goals that I want to attain. Uh, I want to organize fun and educational uh, sports for kids and adults in our community. Um, that's, I don't want to just focus on the kids, I want to focus on the adults because we do have um, obesity problem, uh, we have old people with diabetes, we have basically old people just need to get out of the house and move around, do some exercise. So I want to, uh, my goal is to get some programs for all ages in our community. Uh, next is focus on skills that will help players and coaches become successful on and off the field. I am a coach, I'm a referee, um, I've been doing it for about 20, 20 some odd years. So in order to coach, in order for kids to be successful, they got to have skills, fundamentals. Mm -hmm. So I am, where we're doing now, I just come to practice when I'm sweating. Uh, they're out doing fundamental stuff, skills that are gonna help them for patterns for the game. And also for my coaches, we have an organized plan of uh, practice that we go by every day. I think we do the same thing, the same part every day, the kids are learning, and then we'll get a uh, better group of kids out. Uh, for providing the community with popular sports such as, such as tackle football, flag football, baseball, softball, soccer, kickball, volleyball, etc. Uh, I know this time I've been basically doing tackle football and basketball for the kids, but I want to come in and implement some more opportunities to play more sports such as soccer, uh, girls softball, uh, Volleyball is real big and sneeze, so if any kids from here want to go sneeze, they'll be aware of what a volleyball is mm -hmm. and, and et cetera. For adults, like I said, get them out playing kickball, they can play volleyball, and we'll implement those type of things for both kids and adults. Uh, number five, getting kids and adults more involved in our community with community outreach programs and activities. Um, one thing I um, was talking to a guy today, I um, tried to get the 
but don't, especially the older people. The older folks is a lot older people because I think they're, they they need to be focused on getting them out in the community. Like they can be mentors to kids, but they've been here and they know a lot. So that can be an outreach because, as we know, some of my mid age parents is not doing the job. So hopefully, if I can get those older people out and mentor our kids and talk to them, maybe they can be a little change in our community. And it be a change up some different. That um, I know they involve their grandmas and stuff like that, but they see other older people coming around and talking to them. And maybe they have to change up a little curve off for them so we get a little better out of them. Next would be the different sports that I'll be bringing up. We're doing flag football right now. Right now, I have four flag football teams. Um, wow. I have a five to seven group, I have two eight, nine, ten groups. I have one 11 to 14 group. And we're going to be uh, joining the Mariana Flag Football League. And Sneeze, they're starting the football league over there. They have over 100 kids over there. And we're going to be doing some home and away games with those recreational programs with Flag, with flag Football. And now that will be starting mid November, all the way through December. And after Flag Football, we'll be doing basketball. Um, I would, I've been with uh the Crystal Recreation Basketball League for a number of years. And since we don't have a particular area to fly kids to play indoor basketball, I figured we could join that league since it's already established and um they already have a schedule. So these kids over here can also have the same experience that the other kids have by playing an organized sport, organized basketball. After basketball we'll be doing uh Baseball and girls softball. I'm trying to make girls softball because we're going to be in the Dixie Youth League. Normally, just play Gretchen Quincy, but I'm going to try to join the Dixie Youth League where they play in all the uh, surrounding areas, uh, Liberty County, Bluffstown, Alpha, Mariana, and Sneed. I think that's something that we did in the past. So I'm trying to get back to that so we have more uh, kids to have more games. Girls softball will probably be something new. Um, I don't want to leave our young girls out. They need something to do. So every sport that we have, I'm going to encourage our young girls to participate in because look at it. I mean, as they get older, they're going to be the one that's going to make this um, community grow. Mm -hmm. And they're going to need some type of guidance and some type of discipline for the girls. And after that, we'll be doing summer sports, stuff like soccer, kickball, and also, if I want to implement a summer camp, so I talked to the boys and girls uh, club uh, today, uh, Mr. Keith. So we're going to talk and make up a plan of how we can do a summer camp with the boys and girls club and the challenge, challenge recreation joint. So we can get those kids out doing something for the whole summer. So we'll come up with a curriculum <coughs> for the summer for those kids in the summer. And my milestones. This is something that's future goals, or something that I want to work on to attain. Um, first one is, like I said before, get parents more involved with the kids in sports and activities and social media. Um, I've been here like 12 years, and I think getting parents more involved is one of the, you know, it's low on the total pole around here. So if I can, I'm gonna try my best to get these parents more involved with these kids, because right now, I have like 30 kids and only two three parents for the practice, maybe four. So if I have 30 kids, I suspect 30 parents, father, mother, grandma, because some of should be out there with me. So I'm gonna try my best to try to uh, get that better. Uh, get some community outreach programs, hoping I can get, get you guys to uh, do some opinions about community outreach with the police department. Uh, with the uh, Rotary Club, the Women's Club, to get more outreach programs here in the city for these kids. Uh, my ultimate goal is to get at least 300 kids in our recreation program. I don't, think, I don't think we have 100, but my goal is to basically get, I know we have 300 kids in this, in this town. Mm -hmm. So that could be a goal to where I'm trying to reach every kid to come out there. So we have, we'll have to go to a Mariana City. We can do it for ourselves here and try to reach and have our own leagues. We have those kids. Um, when I had my interview, I told 
What's the parks now? Uh, my job is parks and recreation. And parks is first before recreation. So my goal is to get our parks uh, looking good for people to come to them and bring more people into the city. Um, and that's part of my job. My first job was getting Terrell Field done. And I've kind of started on that because when first people first come in the city, that's the first part they see is Terrell Field. And so I think that a, if I can get that field good, that'd be a good introduction to people coming to the Chattanooga area. Um, creating sports and social events for the city to generate money. Um, I've been independent. I've been doing this, but I'm doing not independent ever since I've been at a barbershop Chattanooga. And I've done on my own, I've done different events. And I know that I don't think many people around here don't think sporting events can bring revenue to the city, but it can. Man, we're gonna have softball tournaments, baseball tournaments every weekend. And I'm I'm willing to bet you bring a ton of money to this city where people have to come out of town, stay in hotels, buy their food at restaurants, uh, and just spend money in their town. And I think sporting events can we have a Plenty of facilities, and we have a river. We have many attractions to get people to come to our city to spend some money, so our revenue can go up. And my job, if it's a recreation, is create those type of events so people come in and then uh, generate money for our city. And that's the my presentation. You don't have any questions? I want to first commend you mm -hmm. on having. So many things you're looking forward to that you want the kids. I agree, kids need role models now. And I also, I was thinking also, I know um, we might get some high schoolers like 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th graders and get volunteer hours that are for the bright futures they have to have. That might be a way we could get some good role models for these kids too. Yeah. But. Um, I'm willing to help you however. I'm excited yeah. about this because when I was growing up, those ball fields were full. The basketball, the gym was full. I mean, and there's kids here that need something to do. Well, I, I just like to say thank you for bringing all of this forward. It sounds really good. It sounds as if you already have uh, looked over into the future to see how you can help us to help our children, not only our children, our elderly. I see mm -hmm. the program that you have down here for the elderly people. Uh, I think that is just wonderful. And I, if I had anything to else to add to this, I would just like to ask you to get with the senior citizens down here at the um, senior citizen group, because they are always talking about our children and what can we do to help our children and I'm sure that you will have some that will be willing to assist you in any way they can. All I can say is just I'm willing thank you, and thank you. I'd just like to say um glad that you're here because you know I, I know you've been here all these years because we used to talk about a lot of things. Um, Everything that you have said is true for your cat because I had watched you even before you became rec director, go out, take money out your own pocket, get shirts, try to get kids to play even when the rec department wasn't going as well. Um, I know that you're a family man and that makes a lot of difference. You're a good role model. I know even from the times of being in your Haircut play when kids and their cousin you stop and quit. You didn't allow it. Um, you have a passion for it, so I know you're going to do it. And yeah, Teddy Hoochie, um, we have had problems with getting parents and stuff out. And I know you're going to push to change that. I know you're going to do an excellent job. The history has already showed me with you, you know, your passion without getting paid for it. Um, going back and forth to Quincy, you know, and I wonder, I say, this man got some crazy hours up here for this haircut shop. <laughs> but he was always over there with our kids as well, mm -hmm. building his own team. 
to try to make sure that the kids will do something. So I know we got a good man for the job. We got a good role model because you are a family man. That 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 says a lot too. So I'm glad that you're here, and I have no doubt in my mind that you're going to do a good job for the city. And most of all, I know you're going to help the kids here, and that's going to that's going to help the city of Chattanooga. Thank you very much. And let us know if we can help you. I'm excited. Is this is this your cell number on the front? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Moving on to the agenda. We can see it. A budget amendment. And what that is, Madam Mayor, at the end of each fiscal year, mm -hmm. we have to we have the budget to equal out the line items and then we also you know never really try to tie down the grants that you're going to get in here because you don't know you got to do it anyway so what uh finance is doing is is uh cleaning up the grants in the agenda and closing it out for the year it requires the council to approve yeah. Remember, would this be what they used to call the true love? Is that they just make sure? They don't really call it that, but that's what it is. That's what it is. Like you, if you spend more in fuel, which we did in every department this year, you know, to someone that department find that, yeah. equal everything up so you're not over budget. It's a closeout, what we always refer to it. But, but it's got a balance. It's what, what yes, you, you have to make. And then, like, we took in grant revenue, so you get a $200,000 grant. It wasn't in your budget, so she has to add a line item for it to come in and then how it went out, where you spend it. Yeah, we're required to have a balanced budget. This is true, so we want to put them. Right. Do I have a second? I mean, a motion and a second. Well, I move that we you, uh, adopt these budget adjustment requests that has been presented to us tonight for the budget for 2021 Williams? Yes. Richardson? Yes. Kimry? Yes, ma'am. Yes. All right. Items pulled for discussion. There were none pulled for consent. And I'm not sure if your citizen to be heard for them, if it was covered in the earlier presentation. It was. Okay. It was. All right. Um, public hearing ordinance number 570. Uh, Madam Mayor, and I'll refer to the attorney, but this is an ordinance relating to the work you authorized the uh, city attorney to do as far as refinancing the law. Okay. Right, and this um, ordinance, basically it's the first step on your refinance for your loan. It um, authorizes the debt. Uh, your charter requires that it be done by ordinance. It authorizes the mayor and the city clerk to take any necessary action on the transaction documents and execute them. It um, basically says that um, the monies, it covenants that you're not going to spend the monies in any way that would mean that it's not a tax exempt obligation, which is what the bank is requiring, which it really just means that you're spending the money for a public purpose and it was spent for public purpose. So um, this is sort of a formal uh, way to do this, but it's the way that it has to be done. And unfortunately, we're going to have to have a special meeting for the second reading. Ordinances require two readings, and your current note it matures on December 1st, so we've got to get this done before then. So this would be your first reading. So do you read the title, or do you want me to read the title? Yeah. Would you read what we do? I can read it. Okay. Would you want to do my title? An ordinance of the city of Chattahoochee, Florida, authorizing the issuance by the city of its three million dollar principal amount hurricane recovery revenue note series 2022 to refinance the outstanding principal of an existing taxable revenue note, authorizing the award of, of the sale of the note under certain proposed terms, covenant covenanting to budget and appropriate appropriate legally available non valorem revenues to pay the note providing for repeal of inconsistent provisions, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. And this is a public hearing. Can you tell me, I looked real quick, but I didn't see it. 
the time and link to this loan? Yeah, it's not in these documents. Okay. It's a three year. Three year. Okay, yeah. thank you. When uh, you have your second public hearing on the 15th, we'll bring back the loan documents too, okay. and I'll have more explanation about the changes. <clears throat> So now I got to talk to the public. Yeah, okay. Okay. Anybody on this side have any questions or concerns about the ordinance? About the ordinance? On my right? Anybody on my left have any questions or concerns about the ordinance? Maybe we have to vote on this tonight? We have to make a motion. Well, you don't have to, and I'm sorry to ask you again. Some clients do, but you don't have to vote. You don't have to. It has to be read twice. It has to be read twice, okay. So the second hearing, you can vote. Okay. Do you have to get a motion? Can I see it? Get a motion to take action. Okay. All right. Okay. Pull your vote. Okay, general business. It's been a first item under general business tonight is a bid award. This is for the DEO, the hometown revitalization grant. We the sidewalk tonight, you know, we've been working on for some time. Yes, sir. <clears throat> you, you've done the contract. Uh, they're requiring us, and you have city engineers, but they required us to do a standalone bid for engineering services just for this specific grant. So we did that, followed their requirements, and put it out. And, uh, Received one response, which is Dewberry Engineering. Oh. And so we're recommending tonight that you uh, award the contract to Dewberry Engineering for the. This is just specifically for the one project, grant project for downtown revitalization. The grant uh, contains for, uh, uh, provision of engineering services, uh, limits the amount, but we'll have to do a uh, task order with them. Uh, if you would do award this, we would negotiate a task order for the cost of doing that, but it will be covered by the grant. Okay, so cost up to the city. Correct. Okay. I see on here it says our work would be complete no later than July 31st, 2022. That's our plan. <laughs> That's, That's your plan, don't it? Do there's a plan. That's the engineering work, right? Yeah. That's the engineering work. Oh, come on, man. You don't have a little one? Uh, I wish. <laughs> All right. Um, I need a second. A motion and a second. I make a motion that we accept the bid award for DuBerry for the DOE hometown revitalization grant. Second. It's been properly motioned and second. Talk about it. Moultrie? Yes. Williams? Yes. Richardson? Yes. Henry? Yes, ma'am. Glass? Yes. Do I have any? Public that like to ask any questions or speak. All right, well, moving on. All right, bid award for the American Rescue Plan grant. Next item 10B under general business uh, by the mayor deals with the smart meter. Again, another project we've been working on for some time. We have uh, you know you had prioritized that. With your American Rescue Plan monies of the four items that you approved, um, working out on this, we have now bid that and we received uh, a bid from lots of companies. Yeah. And this will be for the installation of the smart meters, the, the devices that transmit the information to the hall, the software program, and any of the IT work to set it up. And change from our current software billing uh, software to the new one, get all the bugs out, is included in their services. The real point out, you'll see a number here, their bill was 687 913 28. There's going to be a change order, regardless if you award this bid tonight to them or anybody else, and due to the fact that we know the number of meters, so they do have any meters, but like meter bases and the connection parts we didn't have a, a number you don't know until you replace all those meters what you're going to have to do so we stuck a number in there like 50 percent i don't think it's that high so we discussed this 
who brings us into meeting with the proposed contractor. Um, we'll get an actual count as we do it. Joe will verify it. So you know some of that's going to come off. And then there was another 50000 charge. I didn't like. What was that for? Mobilization. Mobilization of their equipment. And he's already uh, agreed to remove that. But the, I want you to know tonight before you order, there will be a change order. But it will be for lower, not higher. We deducted from them, but what you're approving tonight was his bid form, which we required to do by law, six hundred eighty-seven thousand nine hundred thirteen dollars. But you'll see a change order. It you know, would be several months from now, but it will be to reduce the contract amount. Come here. He he factored in a cushion for. Y'all factored in a cushion for installation in case of old pipes or damage. There's a term for it. Well, we, we anticipate the number of meters that we put in the bid was around 1,300. We anticipate that number to be somewhere closer to 1,100 or less. Uh, just talking with Joe, um, with his experience, he was saying a percentage, and that's the percentage we put in there. What, the reason why we had to do that because we couldn't physically go out there and check every one before we did the project. So it's anticipated to be much less than 1,300. Okay. Okay. And in boxes, I think it was 50% of the number of boxes was was bid on to be replaced. And we know it's not going to be 50%. It might be 30%. And then there was a device at the end, once it called the stand up, or those were 50% as well. So I just don't think we do that number. So there will be a change order. I want council to know that, so, but it will be a reduction. Um, and I've already met with him to nail down some of those before I even agreed to come up here and recommend the this contract. They want to, you know, have no problem with them, and they understand that fully about the, uh, the actual number of pieces we use is what we'll be built for. And then that mobilization thing, I just did not. We're not doing that. And he's his company agreed to remove that. Do we need to have that in writing or? Um, no, the change order will come. The change order will take care of them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it'll come back to you for approval. And so everyone in town will get a new smart meter. So every, every, everyone, is serv everyone is in service or everyone that to be serviced? I mean, are, you know, if they're at a, a, rent, a, a location that does not have an occupant at this time, it will still be changed. Is that correct? If we discuss that, unless it's been Yes, to answer your question, if, if there's a possibility of the house being repaired or a new house going there, yes. Okay. There, there are a few that we won't put them. I can't remember Joe's reasoning. Do you remember what? The sewer had been removed, something had been removed, but there's going to be a few that don't get them. Okay. But, and then we're also going to have something that we'll put in the inventory report for if they're alive. For new construction. Yeah. Yeah. And we have two right now. That's right. And did they say approximately how long it's going to take to get all of this done? The problem right now is the little device that transmits the little computer that transmits City Hall. Uh, they're made over there somewhere. The meters are not really a problem, and the boxes with those. He said that those were a problem right now to get them because they're foreign. Required for them. The first thing they'll do is come and set up the um, the IT portion get with City Hall about how to take the system and plug it into their computer base and they can go out there and go ahead and start putting the meters in while they're waiting on it's a chip, you know, like anything else, the chips for the vehicles or whatever, they are they are way behind, uh, possibly up to eight to nine months. However, in the meantime, the meters can be put in and they will have <coughs> I believe there's three devices, handheld devices, that comes with this package to get to the city. They can go by there and punch that in, okay, versus writing it down on a piece of paper. And that is what will be used while we're waiting on the uh, ready and read to come in. They'll be working, but for it to be fully operational, we have to have those computer chips with the, the transmit. And this won't interrupt any service or anything? Taking them out. It will interrupt service when yeah. I change the meter. Yes, ma'am, for every, every time time one that's working on. Yeah, it's going to go on for a while, but 
Um, but it won't be an extended period of time for each person. No. No. How will we notify the residents to make yeah. sure that they know that? Well, since it's going to be so extensive, I think it would be prudent to do it street by street. This won't be like things we have outages. This is going to be more serious. Knocking on doors or door hangers, something like that. I mean, because we're going to schedule a day to do a street. They need to know. Yeah. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yeah, especially elderly and all that. Mm -hmm. we got. No, no we, we, we will do that when we meet the party. We also need to make sure that they're able to be identified, especially with the elderly people. Uh, the workers? Yeah, yeah the workers. workers. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. There are some weird people coming around here lately. Like but you know, we we talked about this as uh, this is one of y'all's priorities when I came here, and that we finally mm -hmm. getting close anyway. And this system here is expandable for our gas and electric. And uh, I've already looked at some some electric meters. Oh, and another thing in our little negotiations, and you know, some of the city did a long time ago when they bought some software, but there was forty gas. What's the right word? To, to make the gas meters automated, there's 40 here in inventory that can be used, and um, they're going to install those 40 that we have here at City Hall. You know, charge as part of their deal while they're out there. So we'll be able to do 40 of our gas meters, and we may go ahead and uh, purchase the, you know, do gas next, and then the electric, of course, will be last. But this system is expandable to do all of our utilities. How long does the software stay? I mean, how long is the contract for it to stay updated? Like, we'll have to pay an annual an with any software. To, if we want a maintenance agreement, we, we would. Okay. They also have a, I believe it's a six month um, IT agreement. They will come in and train city staff on how to use the system, and up to six months, any questions or issues that pop up that's is, free. Is Six months after they turn the after they turn the key over to us. Okay. All right. I have a motion and a second. I make a motion that we approve the bid award to Avante of oh, the Avante Company. Second. Okay, it's been properly motion and second. Moultrie? Yes. Williams? Yes. Richardson? Yes. Emery? Yes, ma'am. Glass? Yes. Are there any comments or questions from the floor? <laughs> is this club electric water or gas? I mean, it doesn't say on here. I was got confused on the conversation. The meter. Okay. These are for water meters. Mm -hmm. Water meters? Water. So, you know, you, once you put the water meters in, I know there's a this was a crazy question, but uh, you still got to go to the property and read this gap in the letter, am I right? Yes. But there was a plan to move on. To move on. These are compatible. Right. To the gas and electric. This, this, this software system. Okay. And the company that's installing these, they've got a track record of basically installing the water meter? Yes. They, they're from uh, Central Florida. Actually, a piece of mind. Uh, the city of Blockstown has the same system, and I know that the city of Gretna and the town of Greensboro is looking into the same company, the same uh, product. You know, in their, their cities. They heard you were getting up. Uh, is that everything, Mr. Simpson? That, that answers my question. Okay. Anybody else got any questions? All righty. Well, there goes. So we just got to work on getting us electrical and gas. Yep, that will be just the amount to change in the gas you have to mount them. Uh, which had, we have 40 of them have to buy the additional things to mount on the gas meter. The electric meter is just popping one out and putting in a new smart meter. About $120 a piece. But that will be our goal. Once this is in, get the bugs out, we intend to go to the automated system. Sounds good to me. All right, 10C, Firefighter Assistance Grant. Last item on general business tonight is a grant agreement between the Department of Financial Services and the City of Chattahoochee. This pertains to the fire department. It is a grant to purchase some equipment 
Um, we were lucky enough to get approved with the fire marshal, but it's $41,115.16 for our firemen to get some new toys. Because mm -hmm. okay. I stay busy. Yes, I do. Crazy. Is this, is this uh, necessary supplies or is this new equipment or is it? Well, this is good, really good safety equipment, you know, um, technology is come a long way, you know, but they have the breathing apparatuses and then these fire suits, um, something else that we get, extraction equipment, and this one is 100% grant, now we just fixed it to apply for another one that's a 50-50 to buy some really good stuff if we're lucky enough to get it, but it is a 50-50 grant. This one's 100, 100%. And so the fire chief and I will pack it with whatever they can get, right? Oh, yes, ma'am. I don't know. Let's All right. Any questions? All right. Any other motion in a second, please? I will move that we make a motion to allow the city manager, the mayor, and the fire chief to sign the contract for the grant agreement between the Department of Financial Services and the city of Chattahoochee for volunteer fire equipment. Second. Can't been properly motion and second. Call the vote, please. Moultrie? Yes. Williams? Yes. Richardson? Yes. Henry? Yes, ma'am. Glass? Yes. Anybody got any comments or questions from the audience? Yes, I'm just kidding. This is off the agenda. Uh, I won't hold the time, but I'd just like to uh, thank the city council and the mayor and all the city. Uh, so it's been kind of work with the Chattahoochee. I just like to announce that on this Thursday, we are resuming our MLK celebration committee meeting. We begin for the upcoming months, leading up to January observational day. And we want to be uh, very much clear about the respiratory. We want to be understanding that we will be very cautious about how we plan things this year because of the virus and everything. So, community chairperson, I just want to announce that we begin this Thursday and we continue all the way up until the following this coming January as well for the celebration of the day. And all citizens are welcome to come and give ideas. Where will it be at? The exchange. That's right. At what time? 5.30. 5.30. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robert. Any all right, city manager, what you got for us? Well, we've got a few items, but I'll be brief. First, I want to uh, welcome our interim city clerk. I think she's doing an outstanding job. I hope you all are pleased with her tonight. She'll uh, do that. Um, a few quick follow ups from the last meeting. Um, you know, we had a speaker um, about the power outages. It's not here tonight, but I did research that. If anybody wants a copy of it, um, you know, the, the, there's really been an excessive amount of Lincoln Drive, mm -hmm. so we researched that and compared it. And it just said, it said that. There have been eight this calendar year since January 1. Excellent. We're looking into other parts of the city, there's really nothing abnormal. All but one was related to uh, trees, you know, our own storms that we had thunderstorms. There was one, a few. Bully, but we don't know why I'll transform it. It's probably a Leon or squirrel. Um, but, but mostly it was eight. But if anybody would like to have it, we're up to it. Just you know, we do follow up on those things. The other one um, was a fire hydrants. Our water department, you know, does have to flush those annually. They are they are checked. That's not to say you couldn't find one with someone unscrewed the cap <laughs> in between our gas chamber. But um, I was happy with the follow up we have on that. And then I think I mentioned it, y'all, at the last meeting, you know, the Victory Bridge out here, we got a uh, special deal with FAMU and FSU. Well, they came Sunday for their initial uh, inspection of that thing, so we have high hopes for that project. I mean, it's moving along, those students there. Uh, and Katie and I had a virtual meeting with them last week, I guess it was, but I think you're going to see some renderings at some point that we'll be able to bring up here and show you that they're going to prepare. So, really excited about it about that project. Um, there's some movement, you know, code enforcement, we have to not say too much, but um, 
there's going to be some new cases, but the one that's really been, everybody's been interested in, we had some movement on that uh, with the owner and myself. So uh, I don't know how it's going to be resolved, but we, uh, there was movement since our last review. I had mentioned to you before we have Christmas parade, December 3rd, everybody, it's going to be a big one. It's going to be a big one. Um, if the forms be in some injury and the indication, it's going to be until you see one. That's December 3rd at 6, 6 o'clock. Light it up. I mentioned to you these RV park rates, and um, we have researched everything in the surrounding areas. And I do have some recommendations if you would allow me to change these if you so desire. But you know, currently we, we're doing on daily rates. And when we went into this, you know, we were unsure. We didn't know how successful we were going to be. So we wanted to set them very, very competitive. And we did that. Our daily rate is, is not that bad. It's the lowest one in the area, $30 per day. The next closest one is 35 but you have some in the 49 38 another 49 range. But that's, uh, I mean, I would think $35 would be reasonable. That is the same as the next closest one, our competition, which is the old Wingate, uh, they're at 35 On um, weekly, uh, we're currently at 150 weekly. The next closest one is 200 which again is the Abbey's campground. We have 230, 260, 220. So if we just went to the 150 at this time, to 175 on that we would still be still be the lowest in the area but it would generate some additional revenues and we all know what's you know going on down there now it's full and but while they're there you know they are burning electricity and using water and we have some expenses is that and again we would still be very competitive but we would uh be generating a little more money probably is that a five day week or seven day week probably that is a seven day week. On the monthlies, we're currently at 450, which is compared to some as way low. Yeah. The next closest one is 550, the 524. That's at Flint River, the one going in up there at Bainbridge. 550 at Easy, which is the you know the lowest one around the area as far as our other rates, they're at 550. Now uh, Flat Creek out here is 700. Wow. Um, there's an 824 and a 978. But I would, you know, again, we can address these every year, every six months, but the 450 is at least 500. I mean, that's what I wrote as a recommendation to you would be to go to 35, 175, and 500. Now, they can't just stay out there every month, right? That's in the contract, right? They, can, they have to leave. It's a monthly monthly rental, and, and we have let some stay that we had arrangements with that were working on projects. Right, like they did. But if we have a backlog or people want to get... My big thing is daily weekenders and all that, I never want to have it where they can't access and enjoy it. People in the area who's trying to fish or something. Yeah, we don't want... We well, want we ran the four. We don't want them to live down there. Right, and and uh, but we do allow some to do another month That's for special purposes. Well, um, I know that some was working and all that, but yeah, the, that, what happened before is people just started leaving there we're and they started gonna, doing the we're not gonna have deals that. there, and that's not what it's made you know, for. We have some contractors that are working with them. One was in the project at the dam. One was the uh, solar farm. Some of those we do entertain. Okay. And yeah. We, uh, but nobody's just going to be living there to live there. We have to have requests. Yeah. No. The young man that was here before that was talking about the RV park, and he was mentioning about um, giving discount to the veterans and that sort of thing. Did you take any of that into consideration? I did, and I discussed it with him. He uh, came to the office, and we talked about it. But it, it complicates things. If you just did a veteran, and they all have ID cards. But first responders and, and all of that, it's it just going to complicate things tremendously, make it that broad. And a lot of people walk in City Hall to pay their money to receive. So it's not just him keeping up with it. They're going to have to know what to look for and ask. I mean, it's up to y'all, whatever you want to do. But he agreed with me. Um, his big concern, he's a veteran. Mm -hmm. 
to the thing. You know, that's where it started. And then it kind of expanded in the discussion to first responders and teach. I think even teachers came up. But do whatever y'all want to do. Uh, but it would complicate some of the registration proof. Proof of and that kind of thing. That's exactly. see, people about call six months in advance to make a reservation and say that they are and pay with a credit card. And then they not pay. And then they get here, we might need to copy it. You staff would be asking and then have to track it. I well, think if we could simplify it, that would be the best way at this time. I, I just asked a question. Sure, I'm not interested in just him saying the cost. I just didn't hear you say anything about giving consideration as to what he had asked for. And I met with him in a follow up meeting to discuss that after we researched the uh, rates of the area. And everything. And we'll still be the cheapest. We will still be the lowest in every category. Yes, ma'am. Well, I also, I also think, and you and I have talked about this, Robert, that as our amenities improve, that, that would be a good reason to adjust our rates at that time. And I think we're at that point now. Yeah. You know, we just put yeah. that in for and yeah. and um, we're we're full of hookup. Yeah. And everybody's not that doesn't enjoy that. We uh, installed Wi-Fi down there. Mm -hmm. Katie got Wi-Fi top and bottom now. Um, they got that. And you know, we spaced them out when we did the original design. People are comfortable there. They have room. I mean, I don't know why anybody wants to stay anywhere else. It looks like they don't. That's a good thing. But that's what I'd recommend if, if the council would give me the authority to do that or approve that those numbers ever how you need to do it. But um, that's staff's recommendation to you. It should generate you about 10000 extra with the current rates. I mean, the current stays we have probably generate you an additional $10,000. So thirty-five per night, one hundred and seventy-five per week, and five hundred a month. This round, and that would be effective. Yeah. Probably need to wait till the first, first of the year. Yeah, yeah the first week. Thank you. That's in December. Yeah. First of December. First of December. That's good. Your discretion on that. Well, the week now. Wait a minute. The week if somebody came in next week, we could go with a new customer. So. The only ones I'd be concerned with is someone that monthly has already paid. Yeah, somebody that has read it, it, we need to honor what they've already especially pay credit card. You can make it effective immediately, but we would have to deal with the monthly. But that would be okay. Everybody had already read Sounds good. Sounds good to me. I'll take care of it. Are those posted on my website, Katie? So we can change it without the agenda. Yeah, she's real technical. <laughs> she set up my phone. Pardon me. No, okay. So we need to make a motion. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I do. Okay. I think we will go ahead and do it. We'll get it done. All right. I need a motion and a second to, uh, to increase the rates on the RV card. I make a motion that we give the city manager authority to sign on my behalf to increase the rates. For the RV park, 35 a night, 170 a month. I mean, a week. 175. 175. And I got that thing you said. And 500 a week. Second motion. 500 a month. A month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That. I, I have one question that I just thought about. When we accept the credit card for this amount, do we charge them a the fee that the bank charges us, we do charge that okay. plus a service fee. Okay. And sales tax. We have to credit sales tax and submit it, remit it to Department of Revenue. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Moultrie? Yes. Williams? Yes. Richardson? Yes. Henry? Yes, ma'am. Glass? Yes. Okay. Anybody got any comments? Questions? All right. All right. Um, uh, the Rosedale agreement. I know some of you've been concerned about that. That party is uh, back working on it again, and hopefully we can admit it to the city attorney in the very near future. Uh, but I did meet with them, and, and uh, we're ready to proceed with it. Uh, got a new business coming uh, te uh, tentatively, November the tenth. The ribbon cutting. 
6 p.m. The Merchant Isle Store, this old newspaper building, so we have 11 p.m. But we'll put more announcements so as we firm it up, but tentatively right now until about November 10th. Um, and we have a new owner of Thunder uh, Wayne O'Malley. And then the River Project, the uh, Fur Dev Grant, which included that new pavilion we just mentioned, the fish cleaning table and uh, the playground equipment. I just uh, closed it out now that he left, but we we're closing that out. Uh, so those new amenities down the river are complete. And the last thing I have is uh, I'd like for y'all to agree to approve to have a special meeting on the 15th to finish the uh, second public hearing on the bank loan. That's on the 15th. On the 15th. You want to have it at the same time at 6 30? I think that's usually yeah. our preference. Yeah, because we don't want to confuse the citizens. It, it won't take but, you know, just a few minutes, but uh, due to time constraints, that's the recommendation. Okay. Um, city manager, mm -hmm. um, I think it's December 17th where. Um, Miss Blue has the Christmas in the park. Is it 17? Well, I, I think got it's it on the my third, desk Yeah, and you didn't announce that, so I just want to make sure that that's mm -hmm. an annual event also. Oh, yes. That she's yes. put on the calendar, too. Is it the river? No, no down no, the south, south side. side. In the park. In the park. Like in front of the fence and parking area. Did we get porta pies down there or something? So yes. I got paper pies. Nice. I know if she's going to have that, she needs. What's the happening? They do it there. The next December. I think it's the third Saturday. Because the parade is the first Saturday. I think it's the third Saturday. And 17th. 17th. What is on Christmas? I don't know. All right. Sure, I'll go on get that. Five thirty. All right. Anything else, city manager? No, that's all I have. Oh, the meeting. You approve that meeting. Oh, approve the meeting for the fifteenth at six thirty. The special well, second reading yeah. of ordinance five seventy. Five seventy. Five seventy. That doesn't require a motion, does it? Just to schedule it. Yeah, I would go ahead and move that meeting. Okay. I move that we schedule a special council meeting on November the 15th at 6 30 to take care of the wrap up on the uh, second. Second reading. Yeah, second reading. Second. Miss Williams. Marjorie? Yes. Williams? Yes. Richardson? Yes. Henry? Yes, ma'am. Glass? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right, city attorney, anything? Thank you for your job. You're doing one. We appreciate it. Kim? I don't have anything except to say it's exciting to have uh, fresh ideas in the direct part. Yeah. It's, it's, it's good to see. Um, I, I appreciate you looking to have participation by the, a broad age group spectrum. I hate to think of myself as being an old person now, but. Mm -hmm. I just had a lot of birthdays. Yeah, so. <laughs> I'm very excited about that too. But that's good. That's all I really have to say. All right, Ms. Ann Williams. I've got a couple of things here. Uh, Second Harvest will be here on November the 10th at our usual time and location. Then they will be back on December the 8th, same time and location. The police cars, Robert. Tell me when it is that we will be either trading them out or getting new vehicles. It's been a while. We have two in route now. They've been manufactured, but they're on the rail. The, the report we got, they're being railed being to the dealer or whatever. There's another one. There's a cruiser in the budget that you just approved. So there'll be three new ones this year. We just had a meeting. Yeah, I'm sending send an email now to Leon County Sheriff yeah. Department for their surplus. Vision Chief now, and so. I and um, we get five five days. Days. discussing this, trying to look at any way to 
get a take home if we ever get to that, you know. We, we dealt with the other this year with the salaries, but um, we just met on Monday about that very thing. And Chief's got an idea that if uh, Sheriff McNeil Yeah, I thought they, they, they pretty much approved five people. So people. we may be getting some from the Leon County Sheriff's Department to solve that issue. So everybody so we're getting three new ones this year to see the city of Chattanooga to get three brand new vehicles. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, two of them will be in weeks. I'm not sure about the third one, but he has one budgeted to buy. He can buy one as of October 1. Everybody will have to take home car. That's what you're trying to get to. That, that's the goal. Um, we we have uh, three officers that live in the city that, you know, if need be, they, they wouldn't have to get one of them. You know, if we got two officers. I can throw a rock and hit the house from here. Um, now we can also look into the, um, I guess the effectiveness of them coming from home if they come to work, check on the duty and go straight to a call versus, but you know, we still have a, a clock in system. So, I mean, but if it's going to, whatever's going to be more uh, efficient and feasible for the department, that's the way I'm going to go with it. So we have, right now we have a few officers that live, you know, in a little, little further than the ones right here in the city limit. So I'm coming up with a, uh, I guess you could say a, a SOP for future officers, so we won't be having them driving to Georgia and back. You know, so I'm gonna come up with something to keep them in a certain radius. But uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have cars that we can. My plan is to get these cars from Leon County. Where those these cars will be a few of those cars will be designated just for that purpose, so they can still drive the, the good vehicles that we have now, and these surplus vehicles will be only utilized to drive back and forth to the officers that need to drive home. So, so, you know, that, that'll make us more marketable as far as uh, attracting more officers. Yeah, the salary is good, but, you know, you know, we got these uh, good officers coming from Leon County and stuff like that, that they first thing come out of their mouth, and you got to take on cars as a gas. So, you know. But before we do that, it would be, and, it, and before I commit to anything, he's got to find out about these cars. The city of Chattanooga can't go buy 10 cars mm -hmm. to go and drive home. Mm -hmm. It's just impossible. It was a stretch to do the three. How does the gas affect us too? Because, you know, this yeah. year the police department went over twenty thousand dollars. That's the mm -hmm. issue as well. Yeah. But there would have to be policies written because the city doesn't currently have them. Policies for take on vehicles, which other agencies have them, but this isn't just something we're gonna throw the keys to everybody, um, and just we're gonna start driving home. It, it don't work like that. Yeah. First okay. the vehicles, the cost of them yeah. uh is the big you know, that's the big one. And the insurance. And then, Exactly. Fuel policies, what you know. So there's a lot more to this than just doing it. And you have to approve a number of these things. Well, I was, I'm not. I was more concerned with the vehicles that we have in the city now. Uh, <coughs> but anywhere you work it, we have to take a look at it once once we get to that. Um the what did you ever find out about the electrical car stations? We're still looking for grant opportunities. Um, I, you know at some point they're going to be there. Dewberry uh, is looking. and uh, We thought we had that one, but it didn't. We couldn't get it for some reason. It was cities or something. That was a year ago. But we have one where we're looking at, but no, we still are intent. And you know this Build Back Better infrastructure plan that the federal government passed, somewhere in there when it ever gets down to the state level, you know there's going to be something in there for those charge stations. I just know it. Because it's about transportation, technology. I know it's going to be there. But it has a, the state is not taken. The money goes to the states. Then the state will open up a grant opportunity, DEO or DEM, for the Build Back Better uh, funding for that. And I get emails, you know, we're watching it. We're going to apply for several things when it opens up. But no, man, we still would like to do that. Well, we need it more so than ever now because it's more and more of them getting on the road. Absolutely. Um, the, where are you with the bathrooms out there at Southside? Uh, I think we're going to wait till the engineer starts doing the uh, redesign down there. I'd hate to spend money on that if we were going to do something different. You know what I mean? Just design it all at one time. Because yeah. the Southside project. Okay. 
Miss Katie, you got your feet wet. <laughs> Doing a great job. Doing a great job. It's been good working with you because every time I call you, you're right there. It's as if you've been in that position for a while. I was excited to hear uh, about the reparation department and the things that the young man is um, planning on doing. He presented a great plan. I just hope that all of us are willing to throw our arms around him and work with him to get it, get the reparation department where he desires for it to be. He has a good plan. Um, thank you, Robert, for the work that you and the city workers are doing. I watched them on yesterday as they were out there working the street. They were all busy, they weren't playing, but I did stop and talk to them for a few minutes. They were having a lot of fun just working, cleaning up the city. Great job, great job. Chief, I know we've been kind of hard on you asking you all of these questions, but I just thank you because you have an answer for all of us. You may not have worked it all out, but you have a plan to work it out, and that makes the difference. Uh, both Martin Luther King um, groups, great job, great job. Looking for it. Um, and I usually call you Buddy Key <laughs> uh, to, to see what you're going to do for us uh, this time. You and your group's going to do for us this time. Okay. If I can help you in any way, just give me a call. Be glad to help you to do whatever I can. Thank you so much. To the councils, this year has been a ball working with you all. And we all have been able to come to an agreement and working together, uh, helping the city to move forward. Great job. Uh, Robert, I noticed that we lost a few of our um, businesses, but it sounds as if you got a plan to build it right back up again. Thank yeah, you. We got some, Thank some you. Really cuts coming, coming right up. Thank you. Thank you. And the Mexican food truck will be back. She told me Thursday. I talked to her today. It's been missed because a lot of people have yeah. been asking about that food truck. Because every time I go by there, it's loaded. I even miss the food trucks. <laughs> <laughs> so she said it'll be back Thursday. Yes. And I thank each and every one of you all for coming out. Oh, I meant to say, David, I know that I have pretty near turn some of your hair gray with the questions about the um, Boys and Girls Club. I'm working on it with some of the commissioners and hopefully Wednesday, we have a meeting set up with the people in Tallahassee to try and resolve that problem that we've been working on this week. And whatever comes out of it, I'll let you know, okay? I thank each and every one that has uh, tuned in this afternoon with the meeting. And I ask all of you all, oh, I forgot one person. I forgot to thank all of the people, even Mr. Ken, for working with me with Second Harvest when it comes in. And I really, really appreciate it because the last time they were here, uh, the beginning of this month, the weather was so bad, and I was so afraid that we would not have a good turnout like we did before, but we did have a good turnout. Looking forward to having a great turnout the next time, but thank all of the volunteers who are willing to give their time uh, to come out and assist with Second Harvest. Thank you. All right, Mr. Mochi. Uh, like, I'm glad to see that the elementary school is represented here tonight. Uh, thank you for the principal and, of course, our uh, great teachers, Mike, that um, that reminds me that, you know, uh, we had lost Miss Carol. I know everybody loved her. Uh, she was strong in this community, and uh, we're praying for their family, as well as Jerry Wynn family and Stu Parsons. It was leader to in this community as well. Uh, thank Mr. R. Daniel for always uh, 
heading up that committee. Been doing it a long time ever since uh, Mr. James Atkins pushed him to do that. And thank you for taking time out to do that. Uh, thank the lawyer for taking care of that paperwork right away for us. We really appreciate that. Uh, the cameras that we look at to, you know, once we start doing that down there at Southside, make you know, checking out into the cameras. The so artificial will. When okay. When we do the design, we mm -hmm. will have security cameras. Okay. All right. All right. That's good. Um, I'm glad that the rec department we've been sticking in for so many years with this rec department. Uh, I believe Stan would be great. Um, and we've been pushing that rec department a long time, whether we disagree about things or not. We have always stuck with it. And I know that's a good thing for the community. It'll help with the kids with all this stuff that's going on. So we need a strong rec department. Uh, we need to try to help him out, try to get parents involved. That'll make a big difference. Um, let's see what else. One thing that I'm always thinking about, you know, I know a lot of times we, people always say we didn't see it coming or something like that. The flooding in Chattahoochee, that, if something ever happened to that dam, how, how often do we check into where we expect the, most of the flooding to go, uh, how are we going to get to the residents to try to deal with it? Uh, we don't expect it because it never happened. There's plenty of places where something happened to dams and stuff like that and towns get flooded out. Uh, a lot of people get killed. I would like to see us check and figure out what we would do if something happened to that dam. You know, I would hate to wait and we'd be on TV saying we didn't expect it. We need to know uh, What's the plan? And I'm sure they got, when they rerouted that water, they they got an idea where that water would go, how fast they would expect for it to flood out of town. And, you know, we need to have a plan. We don't need to be sitting around saying, well, we're going to expect others to help us out. We need to know what we plan on doing if something happened there. Because flood water moves fast. And I don't want to be like New Orleans or somewhere else you know, wondering why we didn't do something. Let's let's look into that. And if it, if it ain't nothing but once a year, try to figure out what we need to do if we get flooded here. Um, I'm thankful that we never had, we don't have flood, but we ain't have a flood if something, you know, we ain't have a real flood if something happened to that dam. And that's going to be water that's not stopped at all. And I don't, you know, I would like to see us try to work on some type of plan rather than once a year to try to figure out what we would do if something happened to him. And I, I think that's important. I'm in contact with the Corps, but I would almost bet that they have to have a dam that size and be an Army Corps engineer. I bet they have something with the elevations for different scenarios, so it may be something not hard to get. Right, but, it, know it, that, but it's something we need to know. It's something that right. the police department needs to know. Something that you know, uh, uh, something that the residents need to know. If something happens, you know, if, you know, you can try to get on the phone and this and that. But that's, if we don't see without with that water coming over the dam at time, how quickly it's gonna flood here. And you know, and I don't, I just, you know, I, we always look on TV and say, well town get flooded out. So many people get killed, you know, because they were unprepared. I don't want us to be that way. Uh, have we checked into the drain? I know we were looking into some of the drain pipes. Have we been making sure that they're... We made improvements to a number of them. Uh, actually, the two worst ones, you know, wound up being county issues, not city issues. Okay. There's still two more that uh, we're waiting on a study from Dewberry. But most of the small ones have been, been addressed. There's two that we have concerns with, and then the two really bad ones wound up being county issues. But yes, so we have uh, continued. And now, um, you know, the grass has slowed down. We got a list 
of street improvement, sidewalk, otherwise, drains, and they've actually started actually making some progress on those items now because we're not fighting the grass. We can do some street improvements. And uh, I know uh, on the weekends, a lot of times we have one officer. Is it, is it there where we can get two officers on the weekends? Is it like that? We get so short, we're not able to do that. Well, that that's kind of what we're working on these vehicles for because all the officers that we're running across are worried about take on cars. And we get we get the applicants, but then once they hear about the take on car thing, that's kind of where we at. So. Uh, we managed to hire one. Uh, I wanted to get her in today, but she had to. Uh, she had an appointment with her daughter, so she couldn't uh, attend the meeting today. But uh, even with her, that's one of the things she's. You know, we're trying to tell them that we're working on the, the take home car thing right now. So it's just that's just where we at right now. Actually, we right now we're the only agency in Cassie County that don't have take home cars. So. On the on the weekdays, how many officers are we having on duty? Uh, like in a day uh, through, through, like, through the week yeah through Monday week. through Friday is yeah myself you got Sergeant Dixon and you got the the, off, the one officer that's on patrol okay uh usually I'm taking calls as well so I mean so and we also have um uh Sergeant Anderson she'll be going to a supervisory role so she'll also be here Monday through Friday okay. so uh but the the new officer that we hired kind of filled her patrol slot even though she'll be here on patrol in the daytime so we're just trying to fill those slots back in as we uh you know as they leave or as we you know as they move on for whatever reason and it always been a norm and i and it may be an officer to have not really be to get many officers on the weekend and i know that we I mean, only just I mean, have one. for us we've never had that issue we we've always had a full staff but you know just through recent you know actions it just right now we just we're kind of feeling the, the blood of the rest of Gaston County. We've always kind of been pretty good. We've always had a full staff. So we're just coming up with creative methods and, you know, the vehicles is always, that's always the elephant in the room. We, we don't like to talk about it, but that's what it is. And, um, you know, the salaries are good. We got, we reeled in a few, uh, few officers, but when it comes to having them lined up, wanting to work for Chattahoochee is always, you know, to me, and I've explained this to all of the officers, this is the best department to work for in Gadsden County. Everybody knows that, but it's the distance to get here. And the drive from wherever they are, like we, we have a lot of people in the pool around this area uh, from Jackson County, um, you know, maybe a few from Gadsden County, but they've kind of run their, you know, they've kind of run the gamut with those. And, you know, a lot of them have issues and they can't, you know, can't be employed for whatever reason. So the better applicants are coming from further out. And if we're going to have an efficient and effective department, we're going to have to get them here and, you know, so they're not, the car they ain't breaking down trying to get to work. And that is, and you say that's a pick in the weekend? Well, I mean, I can put, we have a rotation, so I can't, the, the weekends really don't matter. If, if we have enough officers on patrol, they rotate, or every officer rotates through the weekend. So if we have Monday, Tuesday uh, rotation, They'll be off Wednesday, Thursday, then the other shift that's off the Monday, Tuesday will come on Wednesday, Thursday. And then the weekends is three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So that keeps rotating. So the officers, look, once we fill the slots, the weekends are going to cover themselves. So we would better have two officers yes. on the weekend. Okay. Because right. yeah, right. I've seen a lot of people walking late at night. Because yeah, like like having one officer on the weekend is kind of that one we, we got. Have. We got one night shift that has two officers currently. So okay. every time they hit the weekend, it's going to be two on the weekend. But when they're off, then it's going to be the one. Okay. But I will say that uh, myself and Sergeant Dixon is always accessible. And a lot of times we're out here doing investigations together anyway in the middle of the night. Okay. So, I mean, it may look like it's one, just one, but if there's somebody, it's always Dixon's a little closer to me. And if he needs me out for some extra uh, surveillance, you know, then we'll be out here. I'm here a lot sometimes. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Appreciate it. That's it. All right, Ms. Richardson. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. Me, I just want to thank all the citizens. Um, thank all the workers, the city workers. Um, I appreciate my council members. We did get along pretty good, I have to say. Um, 
And if there's anything that you need or please contact one of us, so our contact city manager, we need to know. We can't see everything, but we need to know it. And we'll try to do the best we can to get it changed for the better of the city. That's all I have. Yeah.